Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my craft room. Uh, those of you that don't know, my name is Jean Bobish, and I am a Fun Stamper's Journey coach. Um, today, we're going to work on another little card project using Fun Stamper's Journey products. And I'm going to uh, allow a few minutes for anyone to join me. It takes a while for eBay or eBay. Facebook to send out the notifications and let you guys know that I'm live. So I'll give you a few minutes if any anybody's wanting to join me. I just almost spilled my water. Hi, Deborah Lee. Um, I hope you all are having a great Friday. Um, I know it's really cold here and starting to get colder. So I got my long sleeve shirt on and getting ready for the colder weather. So um, today we're going to do a really quick little card. Hi, Linda. Hi, Sharon. It's uh, really easy, really simple. Hi, Deborah. I think it would be great for a uh, pretty little party card for like a make it party or a, a class it would be very very simple and it's more on the masculine side and i know a lot of us struggle with making masculine cards so this is the card whoops we're gonna make today just a very simple easy card so um it's great for a beginner like I said, and it would make a very easy um, make it card because you could have everything cut out ahead of time and your students would just have to pretty much assemble it. So, oh, thanks, Deborah. Uh, it's a little bit something different for me. I bought that stamp. Let me show you what we're going to use. We're going to use the Stay Wild ATS, which... Um, I really liked it's kind of a manly rustic uh, forest there's two little deers down here but just a very nice kind of landscape scenery type stamp and then I just received this today in my order which is the tag elements which have all these tiny tiny little sayings on them which are great for when you want to stick them in a little a little space on your card we're also going to use our journey ovals thank you linda you're always such a great sharer and i really do appreciate it um let's see journey ovals great great set of dies and our journey rectangles you only need the rectangles if you want to do my little paper saving trick okay and we're going to use some more masculine uh, nice beautiful brown colors I'm going to use dark roast for the base of the card hazelnut blend for our mat oatmeal cookie for our oval piece a little piece of our corrugated paper just for something extra to add a little texture and a piece of buttercream that we're going to stamp our image on and we're going to need some hazelnut blend ink and that should just about do it aside from your everyday glues adhesives and and of course a die cutting machine so let me get you guys up in the cheap seats and we can get this thing started I was working a lot on cards today for the can you case it hi Eva can you case it uh, challenge and the savvy seven blog hop which I am both a part of both of and as usual I wait to the last minute so um, this card kind of got whipped together really quick so here it is again and like I said I I love the browns and I love the little masculine look of it so we're gonna take our piece of dark roast which is of course eight and a half inches 
by five and a half inches and we're going to fold this in half and this cardstock is really stiff so um, you might want to just like slightly crease it with your finger and then turn it inside out and use your bone folder to get a nice sharp crease without uh, tearing the paper because like I said it is rather um, thick so I have this a little off center let me see if I can get it back there we go okay next I took a piece of hazelnut blend hold on Sorry, I apologize for that. I could have sworn I turned the phone off. Um, hazelnut blend, and this is actually four inches by five and a quarter. And what I did, just to save paper, you don't have to do this, but um, I like to. I took one of our rectangles, and I think... Uh, have these all in here. I took this size one which fits perfectly and it creates a cutout. Then I took the same die and buttercream paper and I cut out a piece that will fit right inside like so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my frame first and using my white liner tape I'm going to um, place it on my frame because it fits so perfectly um, within the constraints of the paper that it's a great way to attach these frames to the front of your card. So I'm just going to do each side and our white liner tape is really really awesome it works fabulously it tears easily and it adheres our papers together wonderfully so I'm just going to burnish this down using my fantastic bloom tool it's fun stampers journey bloom tool it comes with seven different attachments and you heard me right, that's seven. And I love this little bent poker. It's very sharp on the end, and it burnishes down your tape wonderfully and peels the backing off so easily, it's not even funny. And it's great for our white liner paper, too, our sheets. So, once I get that all off... I'm going to take my card and I'm going to very carefully try to line this up so that it is centered on the front of my card and then I'm going to press it down. Now I'm a little off center but what can I say I am not perfect as much as it causes me angst and my card is not even and that's making me crazy too so let me see if I can get this lined up a little bit better here the paper is so dark that it's very hard for me to see for some reason Okay, well, we're just going to go with it for now. What I'm going to do is I'll just trim it. And nobody will know the difference. Okay, so that works that way well. And it's also a little off on this side. And there we go. Neat and even. <clears throat> and while I'm at it... I will now 
take our two pieces of cook, uh, cookies and cream and our piece of corrugated cardstock, and I'm going to take my adhesive and I'm going to attach this to the oatmeal cookie right around the middle. Now it's going to be slightly larger than the oatmeal cookie and that's the way I wanted it. Okay? Because when it sits on here the corrugated paper will line up with the hazelnut blend hopefully. Or come, You know what? Maybe because I should just um, trim this even and then I don't have to worry about it matching up perfectly with my hazelnut blend. So there we go. The next thing we're going to do is take our oval dies and I'm going to take the largest one and I'm going to place it in the center here and using non a repositionable tape. I'm going to tape my oval in place. And then I'm going to run it through my amaze and we're going to cut out that section. Now when you see how quick and easy this is, you'll be amazed. And I think it's a very rich looking card. Um, and as I said, it's a great man's card. It has a masculine feel to it. Now this you can use for something else. So don't throw that away. So we could find some use for that. And then here is my perfectly cut out mat. And doing it this way, you have your corrugated paper spaced evenly and you can see the little bit of embossing from the die and it continues on to our corrugated paper which makes it look nice and finished um, and even looking. So let me get rid of this tape. Now I'm going to set this and adhere it inside my frame. And that's easy enough to do because it fits right there in the opening. And then I'm going to lay this on top. And I'm going to very, very lightly take a pencil. And I'm just going to draw a very light oval on my paper. Because my stamp is just slightly larger than... Um, the oval. So a little bit is going to go over the edge, which is perfectly fine. And I'm going to take my hazelnut blend. You could use dark roast if you wanted a darker image. But I thought the hazelnut blend was a nice uh, choice. We're going to ink it up really good. And I'm going to, and excuse my head if it gets in the way, I'm going to lay it in my oval so that it is as centered as possible. And there we have a beautiful image. Isn't that pretty? Then I'm going to make sure my ink is dry and I'm going to come along and erase my pencil marks and they come off very easily because if you put it on very lightly and I'm going to brush the shavings out of the way. Now I didn't do this on the original but I think I am going to do it on this one. I'm going to take my dark roast silk and my mat and I'm going to spatter it. So I'm going to take a piece of scrap paper here. 
I save my mats and I use the back of them or the front for spattering. Uh, and then I keep a nice clean one on my desk longer. So I'm going to shake up that dark roast and I want to get that metallic goodness at the bottom. Give it a good shake and then I'm just going to lightly just spatter it here and there. Get some on the corrugated, and then I'm going to let that set so it can dry. And I'll save this for another day. Then I'm going to take our tiny little stamp set here. And this has a lot of good, I mean, there's a lot of sentiments you could use in there. There's thank you. Uh, miss you. Let's see, what else could we? Thinking of you, which is the one I used. Just a note. Hello. You know, there's quite a few in here that you could choose to use on this particular card. But like I said, I'm going to use the thinking of you. And this is the way the stamp comes in one sheet and you just pop these out. But I'm actually saving this rubber because these stamps are so tiny that it's I, when I put them away, I know they're secure in here and they're not going to fall out of my little storage pouch. And then I'm going to come here. And I think this is, no, it's not dry yet. But I'm going to just set it over here for a second. And you see I have this open area down here, which I thought was a perfect place to put a nice little sentiment. So, I'm, like I said, I'm going to use the Thinking of You. And I'm using the same color ink. And I'm going to place it right there on our picture. And then as soon as this is dry and there's still a couple wet spots, I will glue this on there and we will have a finished card. So I hope you like it. I'm going to hit it with my heat gun just so I can show you the completed card. Because some of this, these larger puddles are a little... They're still shiny, which makes me think they're still a little wet. And I, I really don't want to risk smearing them, so I'm hoping they're dry. Oh, and actually, I popped this up. So I'm going to take my large or actually they're called medium, foam squares. And I'm going to place them on the back of my mat. And I tend to use a lot of them because I like a lot of support. I don't want any of my pieces to cave in. So, I'm going to just place them on here wherever I think they need some extra support. And then actually, to save on the large ones, I can go back with the small ones and put a few in these little areas where I want a little more support. I know, I should own stock in these foam squares the way I use them. Okay, so now let's take all the papers off. Which is probably the worst part, is getting the papers off. 
so let me move these out of the way. I mean, actually, the card is even beautiful just like this. Um, but I thought the frame was a nice touch to put around it, the oval. Our browns are really pretty. If you don't have any of our brown papers, um, there's hazelnut blend, there's cocoa, and there is dark roast, and they are all just beautiful. And, of course, our oatmeal cookie is fabulous and coordinates with all of them wonderfully. And if there are any of the products that I've used that you think you would like to consider, you can check them all out on my website, funstampersjourney.com forward slash Jean Bobish. So let's get all of these out of the way. And I am going to center this on top of the hazelnut blend. And press it in place, and there we go. Give you a little closer look. You can see that's the one with the silks. And this is the one without. So you can do whichever... Um, whichever you prefer. So let me bring you down. And put you back in the holder here. So, oh, I see some hearts. I think you like it. Let me grab a drink of water. And let's all see who's here. See where I left off. Okay, I think what's there. Hi, Cheryl. Happy Friday to you, too. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Seal. Hi, Denise and Penny and Sue. Karen and Deborah. Jana. Oh, I'm so glad you guys like it. It is a nice masculine card. And, it, and I don't know why, but we always seem to have trouble with come up, coming up with um, something for a man. Oops, I'm glad you like them. And you guys like the one with the silks. Yes. I love that stamp. I just, I really do. Um, when I had to pick an AT, you know, I from all my orders, you know, if you do a party order, you get to pick some free ATs. And, um... I, this is one that I've been wanting for a while, and I just, I really, really, really like the look of it. Yeah, they add just enough. So, let me go over the products I used again, which is the Hazelnut Blend. Awesome, awesome color. Uh, of course, my foam squares, which I will have to reorganize and put back in their packages. The tag elements for our fabulous little sentiment that just fit perfect in there. Our journey rectangles, which I couldn't live without these anymore. Um, they, they have become one of my go-to sets for uh, saving paper because I like to map my papers. And as you well know, and um, I like to layer them. And so, if I could save every, any little bit of paper, that always helps. Um, our Journey Ovals, which are another fabulous set. And both of them come with perforating dies. So, they're not just the squares. And I don't know if I showed this again, but the Stay Wild AT. It's just such a pretty scene. And our dark roast silk, dark roast paper, hazelnut paper, oatmeal cookie, buttercream, and our corrugated papers. Our fabulous bloom tool, crease tool, and white liner tape. And I think that's just about everything. So... I want to talk to you guys about, a little bit, about the RG Presents. It's something brand new for Fun Stamper's Journey. 
R.G. Richard Gray, the owner and co-founder of, or founder and co-owner, I never can get that right, but anyway, he's the boss. He normally travels around the country and has um, these wild, crazy, fun events every time there's a new catalog that comes out. Well, the Spring into Summer catalog is going to be launching the 1st of April. So, he is having a Spring into Summer event, but instead of it being somewhere where you have to travel and pay for possibly airfare and hotel rooms and food and all that stuff while you're visiting there, instead, he is going to give us a uh, YouTube feed where we will be able to spend seven hours with him creating four projects using new items that are coming in the new catalog. So we get to play with them before they're even available for sale. And the awesome thing is that this is available to customers too. So let me tell you some more. The event will be on March 25th. Right now, there is an early bird rate of $75 to sign up for the RG Presents. Now, what that $75 gets you is two full stamp sets, two ATs, which is this size stamp set, and a paper pack so that we can create plus, oh, plus we're going to get um, all the papers pre-cut and ready to go that will create four cards. Now, he will also have some uh, bundles available for purchase, uh, and I'm sure, knowing Richard, there will be some surprises, some drawings, and some free giveaways. So you get all of that for your $75. If you wait till after February 15th to register, you will have to pay the full price of $99. So believe me, if you're considering about doing this, sign up before the 15th so that you get that reduced rate and save $25. Then um, there is also a PDF list of other project products that you will need to be able to con to to be able to complete the cards that he will be making. Now, some of these things are like the crease tool, adhesive, scissors, a heat tool, things like that that most of us already have. But there may be a few Fun Stampers Journey products that you might need, that you might not have, and there is a list available. So, if you're interested, please contact me at my website, www.funstampersjourney.com forward slash Jean Bobish, or instant message me on Facebook, and I will be more than happy to share all the details with you and let you know the items that uh, you may need to purchase in order to uh, have fun with Richard. Now, you can do this however you want. You can sit in your pajamas and watch it in front of your computer in the comfort of your own home, or you can get some of your friends to register too, and wouldn't it be great to get together for an afternoon, make some cards, watch Richard, and he is always a pleasure to watch, believe me. He is so much fun and so enthusiastic, and just, he's going to teach us some new techniques, and we're just going to have a blast, I know it. I've already registered, I've already purchased what I needed to, um to uh, make the, the cards that he's going to make. And I'm telling you, I cannot wait. I'm going to put my craft table in front of my big screen smart TV, and I'm going to spend the day there. I've already told my husband, don't bother me. I'm, at, I'm with Richard. That's my time with Richard. And <laughs> I'm going to have a blast. And if there's anybody local that wants to come and join me, you're welcome to it. 
So anyway, like I said, um, I right now I am about $34 away from being an executive leader, and I am so very excited. Uh, so if anybody is thinking about this and sign up, that will put me over the edge, and I would just be so grateful. So I hope you enjoyed today's quick and easy little card. Like I said, if you're having a making make it party, or if you're at a craft show doing make and takes, or if you want to teach a quick and easy card class, this is a perfect one that I think would work great. Um, I think uh, people would enjoy making it, and like I said, uh, masculine cards are always different, difficult. So I think um, I think that would be a great one to teach. So, I'm going to sign off for now and see if I can come up with another card for tomorrow. So, have a great evening. Enjoy your Friday, and I will see you next time. Thanks again for joining me. As always, I really do appreciate it. Take care, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.